Is everybody in? Is everybody in? The show is about to begin. Cheering crowd sound It's concerts Concerts that made us Concerts that made us Dot com Hey y'all This is Jay and Lee And you're watching Concerts that made us I don't want to meet Jesus With whiskey on my bread I don't want to see angels If I ain't ready yet to quit, but I can't stop drinking to forget all my regret. When you left Tennessee to go on me, how do it was wrong me to let you go, and now you're moving on. So bury me on Broadway, take away my heart. Don't wanna see your face, I know it's only Monday, but baby, I'm a long way from being close to okay. It's killing me now, they can say she stopped loving him today. Ariane, welcome to Concerts That Made Us. Thank you for having me. It's fantastic to have you now. I'm looking forward to diving into your music over the next bit. So you've got a new track dropping on May 31st, Bury Me on Broadway. It's yes. been described as a love letter to downtown Nashville and also a sad girl country version of a Morgan <laughs> Wallen song. Take it us a really bit deeper is. into it. Yeah, um, I had had that hook sitting in my pocket for quite a while and I really didn't know going into the write what we were going to write about. I write with these people all the time, Lenny, AJ, Tom and Tiffany. They're some of my most favorite people in the entire world. And we sat down and you know, you recap, everybody says what you're doing. And Lenny goes, why don't we write a female version of a Morgan Wallen song? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the day that I bring up the thing that's been sitting in my pocket, burning a hole for the longest time. And I brought it up and they're like, done, we're writing that right now. And we honestly wrote it in pretty good timing and jumped right into the track. And I was like, you guys, I, I need to cut this. I can picture it on hats and on shirts and I can see the music video in my head. Like I have to do it. And it really was just born then. And I love that it's described as like a sad girl, Morgan Wallen song, because it's so <laughs> fun. <laughs> I'm also a sucker for a sad song, so I'll take it. Right, right. Did it change along the way much or did it stay exactly as the concept you had? 
Yeah, I think when I had originally thought of it, I played around with it a little bit as a slower song. So it was really fitting that we kind of pushed that a little bit because I do fall into sad songs sometimes. Perfectly happy, but I like to write sad songs. Um, but the second we really started diving into it the day that we wrote it, we were pretty concrete on where we were headed. Right, right. What was the recording and production like? Was there any challenges or memorable moments that stick out? Oh my gosh, yeah. We are very much so fueled by snacks so we don't get too far without a few snacks here and there um but honestly the recording process is one of the easiest and most chill ones i've had and i really enjoyed that because i felt like it gave me and all of us the ability to be as creative as we wanted to within the production and throwing in odd funny things here and there that are just like in the mix and you hardly hear it but it means so much I think the fact that it was so chill and we were all just so stoked and hype about the song that it really kind of set us up to where we are now. Right, right. I get you. I get you. And what you, fans of your music, what do you think will appeal to them about this track? I think that it's so different than what I've released before. Everything else that I've done is very country, um, sometimes with a little bit of like a pop hint here and there but this one really kind of hits that envelope more than it does country so i think it's going to catch their attention right off the bat by just simply being different than everything else that they've heard right right is this a, a hint of what we can look forward to in the future yeah i think so absolutely everything is going towards that area and it makes me very excited because it's a whole new chapter what do you think it is about country nowadays that's like it seems like everybody is wanting to do country and it's not traditional country it's that kind of as you mentioned kind of poppy country yeah i always view country music as a big family tree and it comes with just like your family tree does many different branches of the family you know you have the the initial two people that start the tree and then it just branches out from there and i feel like country music is really that sort of a situation where now we're in this pop country thing but there's also such a huge moment right now for true country music and i feel like country music is really revolved around songwriting so it all starts at a core as country and where you kind of take it after that is up to you and your ideas but i feel like it's all very rooted in country music and i think the attraction to country music is that it is such a focus on the songwriting True, true, yeah, yeah. What is it about country music that speaks to you? You know, why isn't Darianne a pop star, a rock star? Why a country star? I think because I grew up on it. Country music is everything that I've grown up on. I grew up in the most country ways. So it really is like in my blood. It's undeniable that I go for country music. Right, right. <laughs> and you, you know, it's called Concerts That Made Us. So I have to ask you some concert-related questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, First please. off, what, as a concert goer, what concerts have made you? Oh, I have seen some incredible concerts, but I always feel like the best concerts I've seen is always the concerts that are in the rain. And those are some of my favorite concerts to put on as much as we don't want to perform in the rain. And I'm not trying to manifest that for my outdoor concerts this summer. No rain, please. But I think it's this collective thing where we're all in the same page of being like, we are soaked. We don't really love this, but this is epic. And I, at one point, had seen Low Cash, who was supposed to perform outside, was moved inside torrential downpour like i'm talking raining cats and dogs and the entire zoo at this point and everybody's in this same state of they just want to watch the show like we are just here for music we just want to watch live music and i swear that energy of just desire to watch an incredible show amps a performer up to give that much more of a show because you can feel this like cooking pot that's about to simmer over and it's your job to just crank the oven up all the way and that one was one of my favorite shows it was years ago at a country music festival with low cash my first true stadium concert was actually katy perry which was really fun and i think all of her unique artistry and the way that she's displaying all of her songs and the scenes and the different costumes was so inspirational for me purely because I come up from like a theater background. 
And it was really cool to see an entirely moving scene about one song. And I think the most beautiful thing about music is everybody views it differently. But in that moment, we're all seeing this really cool scene play out in front of you and you can't help but just like feel all of the feels. Those are two that I've loved so much. I've seen so many, but those two always stick out to me the most. And you can't deny your first true yeah. concert. Very true. Very true. I like it. I like it. What makes a good show for you? What has to happen for you to walk away that evening saying that was one of the best I've seen? Oh, yeah. For me, it's especially as an artist on stage, it's the ability to what we always call breaking down like the third or the fifth wall where you have genuinely connected with the audience and you're all kind of in the same pocket. We can be in the same pocket as a band, but the second you break through that wall and you break down that barrier with your room and you're all collective, because that is what it is really when you're watching live music, we're all together as one. Those are the moments where you're like, okay, this is an incredible show. And watching them, seeing people break that barrier where I feel like I know them and I'm also a part of the show. I think that's where people really like dive into live music is when you feel like it's impacted you and you've impacted them and everybody's just running their little brains off. <laughs> <laughs> Summed it up perfectly. Is there, a, is there a concert you've attended that maybe fans of yours would be surprised you were at? Ooh, I don't know. I feel like my first concert being Katy Perry is kind of interesting. Everybody's always probably like, we would expect it to have been like Randall Lambert or Carrie Underwood, but I'm from a really, really small town. And so the live music opportunities to see a big stadium concert aren't the biggest. You don't get a lot of people up there and we do get large acts up there, but it's not crazily often. Um, I feel like Katy Perry is such a random out of left field one. I do love pop music though, so it's really not that surprising. I did, I haven't seen them in concert and I think I might be missing out on it, unfortunately, but I was a huge fan of Kiss growing up and I still am. And that was my bucket list must see concert. It still is, honestly. And I think they're on like their reunion tour, like their last one. And I'm really disappointed because I'm not going to be able to see it or I haven't. I don't know if it's over yet or not. Um, but that was my, like on my Christmas list, asking my parents to go to a kiss concert. And my dad was like, I thought I raised you on George Strait. Where did we go to kiss? <laughs> oh my God. That's hilarious. <laughs> I was um, obsessed. I still yeah. am, honestly. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. And the moment we're all waiting for your own shows for any listeners that haven't been lucky enough to catch one. What are the like? Give us the full experience. Oh, I always feel like a good show brings you on a roller coaster of emotions you don't entirely expect. You always go expecting to dance and have a good time. But I think that moment where you play like the slow song that flips the switch and you're all really in this intimate moment together playing the song and listening to the song that feels like it's hitting you in your soul. We will have a couple of those, not too many though. We don't want to be in our fields for too long. And then I like to say, I just run my butt off at a show. Like you're at a pop punk concert because that's what I grew up watching. So that was my little YouTube search bar all the time growing up. Uh, like the Vans warp Tour was what I watched. So you can expect to hear a lot of like true country music and then the pop stuff that I love but with like a super energetic feel like you will run away feeling like you are out of energy and you need to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> you know, growing up, you mentioned you grew up in a, a very small town. How did yeah. the local scene influence your music or did it even influence it? Yeah, I think there wasn't really a whole lot of a live music scene where I'm from. There's some, but it is not often at all. I ended up in a lot of choirs, so singing choral music, which I think really educated me differently than one would expect because I wasn't focused on being the main performer. I was focused on molding my voice with the voices of the people around me, which I think honestly now has helped me a lot to be able to embody different parts of my voice that I know I can access. and. I would say that that education in the choral background really shaped me into the performer that I am in the way of like keeping that stature and the professionalism, but also 
being on stage so much growing up in theater really kind of gave me that showmanship, which I think really kind of makes the biggest difference when you're used to being on stage. True. True. Now you've played some pretty cool gigs over your career. Is there one that sticks out as maybe a high point or the best you've played? Oh, speaking of the rain earlier, I played a show in the rain at Winstock years ago and it was that mutual thing where we are all like we are getting soaked in the rain is something i've never seen before and i remember running around stage and being like i'm probably going to slip like i'm running we're everybody in my band we're all like on this hype energy level that you really can't describe unless you've experienced it it is like the ultimate high of a performer and we literally only got to do five songs we didn't get to do many songs at all because it was that kind of weather like there's lightning there's all these things for our safety we couldn't put on a longer show but i don't think i've ever performed five songs harder in my life <laughs> sounds like a hell of a gig oh and it was so fun if you flip that around then is there one that sticks out as maybe the worst experience everything went wrong and how did you overcome it oh geez I did a lot of solo gigs starting up where I'm from. Um, it could have gone anywhere from the sound is just not cooperating or you're expected to perform on the most strange stages that aren't really stages. It's really just like boxes put together. Um, I had one show where I just continuously was breaking strings. The room was kind of weird. Like you weren't, I wasn't able to connect with them. It was that kind of a show where you're fighting to connect with people. And I just literally kept breaking guitar strings and I was like, I am going to run out of strings if I break any more. And this was many, many years ago, but I remember just fighting through that show. And it unfortunately was one of those where I was like, I cannot wait until my time to get off stage is up because it is just not going well. And the people were loving it. They're asking me to play songs, but I was just like, why am I, why are these many things going wrong? There's problems with the sound when we got there, we got started late. So it's just like all of the boxes that are, negative were being checked but thankfully the people were so so patient they laughed with me when i'd break a string they would sit there patiently as i talk with them as i'd fix it so i think hindsight is 2022 because now i see it as like such a big growth moment where i can handle all these situations so well now had i not been put through the panic of the first time that ever happened then i'd probably panic still so i think it was meant to happen and i was meant to play for as long as i did with that continuously happening yeah yeah definitely definitely i think it's better those gigs happen early on you know well obviously yes. earlier on you don't want to be standing in front of five thousand people and start panicking you know right and this was like 10 people and thankfully they were all so sweet and i think they could tell that i was like oh my gosh <laughs> and i think they felt that for me too so it was we we're all kind of internally struggling <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of audience and fans, is there a fan encounter that maybe sticks with you to this day? Oh my gosh. I always feel like it's the times that I'm not expecting to have so many come up to me that always stick with me because I'm like, they just took time out of their day. And first of all, they recognized me somewhere, which is wild, but they took time out of their day to like come and say hi or fans that make things i think is the sweetest thing in the world i've had people mail me bracelets and or show up to shows with handmade bracelets and it always makes my day because they literally took the time to do that um i think anytime i'm able to interact with like young kids that love music though is some of the times that like fuel my soul hmm. yeah definitely inspiring the next generation almost yeah it's so yeah. so cool yeah when it comes to show time then how do you prepare how do you psych yourself up and then afterwards how do you wind down <laughs> the wind down is so hard <laughs> <laughs> i could imagine um, i do the vocal warm-ups i make sure i've got you know i'm look, feeling good in my outfit and whatever the things are i need to do beforehand to feel confident i try my very best to do that every time Granted, sometimes you're not in the perfect position to be able to do that so you have to be able to kind of cut through those moments but uh, we start with like the same handful of songs on every show and I feel like the second that the drums hit this trash can situation I always am like all right here we are we're here and that's like the moment that I feel like this flip switches in my brain and those are those are my favorite moments the the coming down off of a shift or a show 
is always so hard though because you're, you're still so hyped and you still want to like talk to everyone and then you're like oh no i probably shouldn't talk anymore because my voice is going to be upset it is so hard to balance that yeah yeah i could imagine what's it like say the next day do you ever experience where you play one hell of a show say on a saturday night you get up sunday monday morning it's kind of back to reality you might have those post gig blues how do you how do you deal with it I always joke that I have the most humbling schedules because I'll go from a full band Saturday night with packed rooms to a Monday opening show 11 a.m. in the morning. So I'm hit with both sides of the spectrum to where we have energy that is nuts and we can't even contain ourselves to, okay, we got to fight through this like early, early hour and kind of energize people to the point where they will be able to end their night like that. And it is honestly, seriously, the most humbling thing, too, because you'll be like, I'm on top of the world. We just packed this place to, okay, there's two people in here. How can I connect with them as good as possible? But I always say that the people I meet on those early, early shows are some of the people that really are the most in tune with me as a person, because you get to know one another and it gives you that opportunity to have conversation Whereas on the other side, it's just a bunch of people and it's hard to interact with each person personally, but they also get you as an entertainer and your artistry and the hype level. So at each show, I think people get to see a little bit more of you and different sides of you. And I think it's really special. True. Yeah. Yeah. How does that affect, say, from a vocal point of view? I'd imagine playing that early, kind of you're tired, you're not in the mood. How does it affect your vocals? Or does it? Yeah, I thankfully have had a lot of training vocally. So that gives me the ability to kind of have the upper hand there and to know my voice. I just try to get up plenty early uh, before the 11 a.m. or 10 a.m. Make sure I'm awake for a while. I've warmed up. I've drank about as much water as I should and I've eaten really well. So I've fueled my body adequately to be able to then perform for a lengthy period of time. And the warm up is the most important thing. I drink warm water on stage all the time. So that is also helpful. Um, cough drops can be your friend too. So we've learned our things to get through. <laughs> I like it. I like it. And when you think of the future, then how would you like to evolve? Say five years time we're sitting here. What would your career look like? Oh, I hope I am able to make a living purely off of writing my own music and performing my own music. I do a lot of playing other people's songs, which I do love. I think there's so much fun in playing things that people are familiar with, but I hope that at that point, people are beyond familiar with me as a person and all of my music. And I'm able to do that and, and be successful within my own terms. I think everybody has a different definition of success, but for me, it's being able to do what I love for a living and live that out to the fullest. I like it. I like it. Is there a, a cover that you feel so comfortable with or you look forward to that it's like, you know, this song could have actually been raw for me? Oh, geez. Lately, I've been kind of jumping into the Adele ballads because I feel like being able to belt is so much fun and being able to show that side of my voice is one of my favorite things. And I, I don't think that that was necessarily written for me. It was definitely for Adele, but I love being able to cover it and play it for people because people love it, but they oftentimes forget about it. One of my favorite mashups that we do, though, is we'll go from Last Night, Morgan Wallen, into Closer by the Chainsmokers, which is an epic pairing. Everybody forgets about the Closer by the Chainsmokers song. And I swear the two of those songs go together so well that they were made to go together. Uh, one of my guitarists, Josh Huddleston, showed it to me and I was like, we're doing that all the time. <laughs> like, I'm going to take that too because I love it. That is one of the moments that I look forward to the most because there's there's the pop vibes in it and there's the good belts and everybody's just stoked because they hear here last night. And then you hit them with closer and they're like, wait, well, I forgot about this song. And that's exactly how I felt when we did it the first time. And then I'm watching them get to go through it too. It's so fun. Right. right. Is there, is there any clips of that on YouTube? Is there anywhere we can see it? No, I don't think so, but we should really film it and share it so everybody can watch it. Cause it is so much fun. 
Yeah, I'd love to see it. It sounds very interesting. You're right, though. It's two that you would never put together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, before we dive into the last couple of questions, future plans for the rest of the year, what can we expect from you? Oh, we have lots of music coming this year. We kind of had a little moment of silence preparing for all of this. So we have four songs slated for the rest of this year, uh, Bury Me on Broadway being the first one. The introduction to the new sound and the new chapter for me, and followed by three incredible songs. I've been writing my butt off, so I'm very excited for people to hear all of these songs and to kind of get a taste into what's coming even into next year. Right, right. Any sign of an EP or maybe even a, an album on the, on the horizon? That's always a goal. I think right now we live in such a single world that that's so much of where my brain has been trained to focus, but I am a sucker for a good album. So we'll see. We'll see what's in the cards for us. Right. Right. I like to hear it. We'll uh, dive into the last couple. So these are a few random fun questions, but I'm intrigued to see your answers. First of all, what are you currently obsessed with? It can be anything from a TV show to a book or food. Ooh, current obsession. I was just watching Bridgerton on Netflix. They just came out with their new season and I love Bridgerton. I love that like classical vibes. Um, But as for like random obsessions, I've recently become very obsessed with flowers, like planting, which I live in an apartment. So it's not like I can really get in there with that, but It's like kind of taking over my mind because I'm trying to make sure that I keep these things alive and give them adequate amounts of water and whatever else that they need. And I'm realizing it's a it's not like a full time job, but I'm definitely thinking about it all the time being like, okay, this one's not looking very good. What can I do about this? Yeah, I'd imagine that it kind of becomes almost like having a pet, you know, (laughs) and I don't have one yet. So I feel like I'm just in training. (laughs) That's a good way to look at it. The uh, the next one's a bit of an odd one. If you had to spend 24 hours locked in a room with any musician from history, who would it be? 24 hours locked in a room with anyone just seems a little frightening. I feel like <laughs> it, that would be such a roller coaster. Oh, geez. Um, wow, that's a tough question. Hmm. I really, really love Tate McRae right now, but I've also been obsessed with Ellie Golding my entire life. If I could spend 24 hours with her, I feel like it'd be really, really fun. Yeah, actually, she's a good one. She seems to be kind of down to earth. There's no ego or anything about her. She does seem that way, doesn't she? All of yeah. her performances are so good and I can like feel her singing from her soul. And and that's like we're talking about, like concerts are so special because you feel that. And every time, even a video I see of her, I'm like, oh, I can feel it. (laughs) Yeah. And the final one, what's your go-to album? What's an album you constantly revisit? Oh my gosh. I revisit a lot of Ellie Goulding albums, actually. Um, I think it's the Still Falling For You era. Those, that album specifically, I listen to all the time. Um, because I do play in Nashville, a lot of the times I am listening to Shania Twain albums. So the woman in me is one of my favorite ones of her songs. I love that song. Uh, there's a lot of random albums. I also really love Louis Capaldi. Um, and his most recent album is, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is good selection there. Listen, Darianne, it's been an absolute pleasure now. Thanks a million. Thank you so much for having me. For a box of your things You didn't want them back You just trying to see me And I'm like, oh, oh, oh Let me go, go all night Enough with the waterworks, baby There's no point Everything you say now Just sounds like what you know
Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. And if you're interested in signing up the Band Builder Academy, use the link in the show notes below and enter the code CONCERTS and you'll receive 10% off. So, until next time, keep rockin'. Hey, hey, what are you guys still doing there? The show is over. It's over. You can go home. Go on. We'll see you next time. We'll be here. <laughs>